Dubliners are so lucky to have the Dublin Mountains on their doorstep. A place to take a break from housing estates, business parks and traffic. And instead, enjoy the mountain air, the wildlife and forest trails for a while. But have you ever wondered about the people who stood in this landscape before us? People have been using this landscape for thousands of years. The earliest archaeological evidence for this comes from the Neolithic period. These were Ireland's first farmers. They left truly monumental marks on the mountains in the form of the megalithic tombs where they buried their dead. Like the portal tomb with their massive capstones and the mountaintop passage tombs that are part of an enormous cemetery that continues into the Wicklow Mountains. Wedge tombs named for their tapered shape. Some of these remained in use into the Bronze Age, a period that saw the arrival of a new population and a new technology, metalworking, in copper, gold, and as trade links developed, bronze. Evidence for the Iron Age is more difficult to find. But on Rathmichael Hill, there is a large hill fort, a place of assembly. This was a time when the political landscape of the historic era was being forged. Christianity arrived around the fifth century. The earliest churches were wooden, but the ruins of later stone churches that stand on their foundations can still be seen. In some graveyards, you will find cross slabs with unusual geometric designs. These are known as the Rathdown slabs and are believed to have been made around the 12th century by communities that were a fusion of Irish and Viking descent. The arrival of the Vikings marked a new era for the Dublin Mountains. Previously, all settlement in Ireland was rural. There were no towns or even villages. This new urban centre needed food and other supplies from its hinterland. They also provided a buffer from political threats beyond. When the Anglo-Normans arrived at the end of the 12th century, they saw the same kinds of threats, in particular from some Irish families from the Wicklow Mountains. This is why South Dublin had one of the highest concentrations of castles in the country. It also led to the order to build a large ditch around the areas of Anglo-Norman control. Traces of this pale ditch can still be seen in some surprising places. The threat of the Irish tribes like the O'Toole's and O'Burns never really left, and the mountains continued to be a place of refuge. Finally, after the 1798 rebellion, the British army built the old military road from Rathfarnham to Ockavanagh, which finally gave them access to these remote outposts. Of course, this also opened the mountains to other visitors and day trippers, many of them discovering this wonderful mountain landscape for the first time. Little did they know, as they were travelling this new road, they were walking through a landscape that had already seen hundreds of generations of people pass through.